Welcome to Tuesday of the first week of Advent. We had our first Sunday of Advent. We're off to a great start. Thank you for joining us once again today. Let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus longs to come and break into our lives. Uh, let's prepare ourselves. Let's ask him for his mercy that we might offer a welcome whenever he comes. Lord Jesus, you are the way, Lord, have mercy. You are the truth, Christ, have mercy. And you are the life, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Look with favor, Lord God, on our petitions. And in our trials, grant us your compassionate help, that consoled by the presence of your Son, whose coming we now await, we may be tainted no longer by the corruption of former ways. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength a spirit of knowledge and a fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den. And the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse set up as a, a sing, signal for the nations. The Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Justice shall flourish in its time, and fullness of peace. Justice shall flourish in God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in its time, and fullness of peace. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace, till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Justice shall flourish in its time, and fullness of peace. He shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity on the lowly and the poor, the lives of the poor he shall save. May his name be blessed forever, as long as the sun his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. 
All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Justice shall flourish in its time and fullness of peace. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and the clever, you revealed them to those who are like children. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son, anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Turning to the disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I say to you, many prophets and kings desire to see what you see, but didn't see it. They hear what you hear, but didn't hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, one of the great moments of my priesthood happened about eight years ago. And it was the first time we opened Alpha to the parish. We had our small our group of about 40-some people who did Alpha together. Then we opened the parish, and 150 people showed up, and we were all kind of amazed by that whole thing. And this day I'm talking about was our day away together. Maybe many of you remember being there. And um, I'm not sure where it was, Christ the Savior or UPJ or whatever, but it came to the time of the prayer ministry, and I sat on a chair in the middle of the room. You, you guys were all around the sides of the room praying for one another. It was one of those beautiful sights I have ever seen as a priest in my entire life. To me, it was one of those moments whenever you saw the church acting like the church, as only the church can. It was a beautiful moment of affirmation and love and care for each other. I'll never forget it. People having direct experiences of Jesus in their lives. And I watch with this joy, a joy deep inside my heart. And so the words I could have said at that moment was, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for all that you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and the clever. You revealed them to those who are like children. In the gospel today, Jesus had just sent out the 72. And they came back from their mission, and they are on fire. They're ecstatic. Even the demons were subject to us because of your name. And they were so excited by all this. And I can only imagine Jesus being so fired up. And he would have said at that moment, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I say to you, many prophets and kings desire to see what you see, but didn't see it. They hear what you hear but didn't hear it. And in our first reading today, Isaiah presents this incredibly utopian vision, the stump of Jesse. And this is the, the, the line of royalty in, in the southern kingdom, in Judah and in Jerusalem. And indeed, they were like a stump. Corruption, moral decay. The kingdom of Judah was a wasteland, a stump, and not a tree. And from the stump of Jesse was going to come this great ideal king who would rise and rule as king should. The Spirit of the Lord would be resting upon him. And as we know that Jesus was and is that king that Isaiah is talking about in the first reading today. I've been talking uh, on Sunday and on Monday about Advent, about being a time where you and I are to prepare 
for the coming of Jesus. And it is. It's all about that. Jesus is coming at the end of time. Jesus is coming. We make that present, uh, that that first coming along. They came a long time ago, but made present here with all of us. And Jesus is coming into our world today. But also, Advent is also about hope. Hope expressed in the gospel today. Hope expressed in the first reading from Isaiah today. Hope experienced by those who grasp what it means to become like a child. And folks, there is no more important phrase for us to ponder than this idea of becoming like a child. Uh, a good friend wrote a, a book about the spiritual life, and he said that everything, everything that we need to understand about how to grow in our spiritual lives and be disciples of Jesus is wrapped up in this idea of you and I becoming like a child. Children do it unconsciously, but you and I, as we grow as adults, are called to do it all consciously. Then we begin to grasp this great hope of the coming of the Messiah that Advent is all about for us. God bless you. Thanks for joining me. Here's my question for today. Is your life filled with the hope and expectation and the wonder of a child this Advent season, opening your eyes and your heart to the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. God bless you folks. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing you once again tomorrow. Goodbye now.